Scotty, welcome to the Golf Digest. Good challenge. Thank you for doing this during yep. the off season. <laughs> hope, you, hope you're feeling good and, and ready to be challenged. Yeah, we'll have some fun. Okay, good. Well, basically, the rules are pretty simple. Imagine 10 10 yard grids out there. The first one goes from 180 to 190, and the last one goes from 270 to 280. Your goal is to hit a ball into each of them in the fewest number of swings. Okay. And you get to pick the first one, then after that, I start picking. Not bad. <laughs> So 180 to 190? 180 to 190, generally a good par, we've done this with a few different pros, is kind of around 15, about 15 balls to get it in, or 10, it's kind of a decent I'll go score. with the six to start. The six, so this is what, 180 to 190? 180 to 190. All right. Looks good, nice and straight. 183, perfect, right, right in the middle. All right, one for one. Who does most of your numbers? You Do you know them off the top or is it Ted who, who's like truly um, the numbers man in your relationship? I, I know my numbers off the top of my head, but Teddy and I will work through it when we're uh, when we're playing. Right, right. Thank you. Why don't we skip, jump ahead slightly to 200 to 210 for the next one. Let's see if the six will get there. When you need to like lean on, when you need to lean on. Yeah, I'm going to take an extra second at the top and try and draw this one a little bit. and okay. That'll be how I do it. That's not going to get there. Probably going to need a five. Didn't quite draw. What are we looking at? 194. Yeah, yeah, go get a five. I think that's the number. Do I have a five iron? Screws are a little dirty. Need a wipe? You nah, go. That's permanent dirt. <laughs> What's a normal day in Scotty Scheffler's off season look like? Well, it depends on the day. A lot of times, this, this time of year, I'm doing some sponsor stuff and yeah. things like that. But this time, I mean, you're catching me right at kind of the end of my uh, no golf. Right, right. I'll probably start practicing in the next uh, next couple of weeks. And but. no golf truly means like don't touch. I've played club. one or two social rounds with my buddies, but I haven't obviously taken it very seriously. And then when you start ramping it up again, like what is? I'll start. Pra I'll start practicing mostly. So like yeah. this time of year, I still like playing golf with my buddies, but I'll do no practicing. I took a good two weeks where I, I wasn't doing anything in the gym either. I just took two weeks to really just chill, and then after that, I'll. I start ramping, started doing ramping it up again. Yeah. yeah, cool. All right. Well, 200, 210, so 205 is your number. Looks good. Little baby fade. 211. All right. Give it another go then. And so, like, when you're practicing during the off season, like, a couple hours a day, then go play, is that kind of what it looks like? Um, I usually play half the time and I practice half the time. Okay, okay. Two o two, perfect. All right, let's move ahead. Because you're still warming up, do you have a preferred number here next? Do you want to go? It's up to you. You're the boss. How about two twenty five? How about that? We'll jump ahead another couple. Okay. Four. I heard a lot of pros talk about how much weight they lose during the season just because they're working so hard. Is that something that's true for you? And does that affect your distances? Um, does it affect my distances? No, but I try. I do try to maintain. A yeah. certain weight throughout the year. Right, right, right. And then after a couple weeks in the off season, I try to get back down to that weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how we one Should be good. Two twenty-three. Boom. Two twenty-three. Good job. All right, why don't we jump up to two forty-five? 245. 245. So like, Scotty, what are your strengths on tour? You've talked about a lot, it's just distance control. I mean, how do you go about working on something like that? Well, usually when I go out to practice, I, I always have my track man out and I make sure my technique is good, my swing's in a position where I like it, and then, uh, then we just go into hitting shots and hitting distances. That should be good. How'd you hit it? Good. 237. All right, you're about three yards shy. That's a cold Scotty right That's there. a cold Scotty. Looks pretty good. Kind of a leaning, supple draw. That should be good. There we go. How often do you move around the distances doing it like this, where you're hitting a different distance each time? Pretty much every time. Yeah. So, like, I have my stock distances that I check each day. Yeah. And then, uh, 
I go from there and I start hitting shots. So I guess my question is, do you hit the same shot however, however many times in a row? How often do you well, hit Well, I usually shot? hit the shot until I try and pull it off. Okay, okay. So yeah. if you're trying to hit a 200 yard shot, you're just going to keep you're just going to keep hitting. Yeah, it. like I'll give myself, I'll, I'll usually take, when I get up to 200 yards, I'll give myself a little more tolerance. But right, if I'm right. hitting wedges, I'll usually take two yards of tolerance on either side. And Nice. Randy will make me go until I hit it, which is sometimes one and sometimes you know, four or five. So 235, so 230, 240 is your zone. Yeah, further than I thought. Why don't we drop down to 190, 200? Okay. Six, please, Blake. So one kind of fascination for the media is where the uh, caddies have veto rights over, over shots players are about to hit. Is that something you have? Or? Teddy does not have veto rights. Um, I think if he really would, if he would ever be in a situation where he really needed to veto me, he'd probably just say some interesting things to try to convince me. Just threaten you in some way. Not, not threaten me, but he, like I can tell typically when he's trying to talk me into a shot and if I'm feeling really good about it, I'll just tell him, no, I like this. And he'll be like, okay. Nice. But if he ever is trying to talk me into something, he'll, he's got a good way of doing it. Awesome. I love yeah. that. All right. He hasn't had to say, hey, let me veto you. Good swing there, six iron, 194, perfect, all right. Let's go 215 is your number, so 210 to 220. It's, it's a good way to practice at least, right? Varying your distances, I feel like this is- Well, that's how I practice, yeah, yeah, I get my stock down yeah. and, then I'll, uh, and then I'll go from there. That's pretty good. Might need to get up a touch. 212, perfect, so let's go uh, 255 on this one. Okay. Three wood, Blake. 255 is my number? Yep. So typically one of the things I do is whatever tournament site we're at, I always get my numbers at the beginning of the week. And okay. so a lot of it depends on the grass type, depends on temperature, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, especially with a machine like this, which I don't, I don't use this one mm -hmm. specifically, but I have my way of doing it that, right. that we like. And so I'll get my stock numbers at the beginning of the week and, um, play off those nice okay cool well 255 what is this a five wood three this wood? is a three wood i'm gonna hit a kind of a lower cut with it low cut choke down on it hit a little lower cut Ooh, it's a bit of a fairway finder there 250 250 perfect all right let's uh just jump up one more 260 270 you got two one the second to last one did you always hit fades? I mean, we associate you so much with fades, but- Yeah, I don't like, know how that uh, happened, to be honest with you. Like, did you sling draws growing up like a lot of- juniors? I fought a hook when I was in college. I used to overhook it. Really? I typically faded off the tee, but I I hit all kinds of shots. I don't I don't know how that became a thing that I don't don't draw the ball. That's so interesting, yeah. yeah. So how would you, just, so you wouldn't describe yourself as kind of a, a fader? No, I, I, I like to play shots. That's how I play. I see, and if the pin's on the right side of the green, I typically like to curve it in that way, and if the Pins on the left, I typically try to move it in that way as well. And, um, I don't really know how that became a thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it is. <laughs> it, it, it is. <laughs> I think I think it probably something to do. I remember the Masters in 22 where I'm trying to hit big hit hooks off the tee. Yeah. And I, when I get late, I sometimes have to save it. Yeah. But it's usually something that I feel in my swing that I then have to, like, I'll just get to the top and I'll get down here. I feel like I'm late and then I'll just the high, kind of save it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it definitely looks a bit goofy, and so someone might see that and be like, oh, he doesn't really. Or it's harder for him to hit a draw because this so eye-catching or whatever. They yeah, yeah, think, exactly. Yeah. But, like, really, it'll, it'll happen on a hole like 10 where I'm I'm trying to hook the ball as much as I can. And I just aim really far right and hit a And you guys are trying to hook, hook I mean, shot. it's a, a hook. Yeah. It's not a draw. I'm hitting a hook. And I, what I do is I aim so far right to where I almost feel like I can't hook it enough to hit it left. <laughs> That's awesome. Try to fade that one a little bit. Might be too much fade. Might be too much fade. Oh, 251. Yeah, one more, please. Even though you're cold, off-season Scotty's still doing very well in this challenge. That should be good. There we go. Perfect. Right on the number final. 270, 280. So with three woods a club, I actually have to hit a lot of different shots with. Yeah, it seems like it. It's a big gap for me, so I have to, like, I'm going to use it for the 250 to 260, 260 to 270, and I'm just going to use it for this one. Right, okay, cool. 270 to 280, you said? Yes, 270 to 280. 
And so now I'll just hit the draw. And it should go the distance. Yeah, maybe a little short. 258. 258. I may not be able to get. That's interesting. All right. So when I practice at home, I, the machine that I use, I have four numbers that pop up. It's ball speed, distance, club head speed, and spin. And if the distance is where I think it should be, then I don't look at anything else. But if, like on that one, I don't really felt like I hit that ball 248, and I see the spins up to 4,700, mm. which for the way I hit it, I think the ball was just wet or something like yeah, that. And yeah. so then in my head, I'm able to just toss it out and hit another shot. Right. So right. I'm just going to literally hit the same shot and see what happens. Two seventy. Two seventy. So you see how the spin number is down over a thousand there? Yes. So you've just identified a slight nuance in the go how the golf ball was just. Yeah, it's like wet. I could have rolled it across a wet spot. Could be the lie that it was in. A lot of times, if I practice into the grain or down grain, it makes a big difference. Off season, Thanks. Scotty is, is, is really good at distance control. Yeah, off season, not stretched, Scotty. Not bad. <laughs> All right, thanks, so much, yeah, thanks. Scott. I, I appreciate. I really appreciate. Yeah, you got it. it.